Thou art God. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believed in me, though he died, yet shall he live again. And whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Man that is born of a woman has but a few days and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow of continued not. We brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we cannot carry nothing out. The Lord is my life and my salvation, and whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. And whom shall I be afraid? Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations before the mountains were brought forth. For ever God has informed the earth and the world. Even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believeth in me, though he die, yet shall he live again. And whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Man that is born of a woman has but a few days of full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fled also, and the shadow continued not. We brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we cannot carry nothing out. The Lord gave, and the Lord had taken it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord is my life and my salvation. And whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. And whom shall I be afraid? Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations before the mountains were brought forth. And the ever thought has formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting. Thou art God. Hallelujah. The Father begin to sing.
great woman of God. Yeah. None other than Mother Marty Coleman. Come on, let's clap our hands and celebrate our life. Amen. She's such many lives. And we certainly thank God for her life. Amen. Amen. We're going to go further in our service. Amen. We're going to give it to our facilitator on today. None other than Bishop David Hines. Just say amen as he comes. Yeah. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Give God some praise in this house. Oh, that's kind of weak. Oh, that's kind of weak. Oh, that's kind of weak. Oh,
we've all been touched by this lady. And God, we say thank you. You're such a good God. A loving God. Thank you for missionary Dorothy Coleman. For the encouraging words she shared with us and the time she ministered in song to lift thy heavy hearts. Now God we come and we pray for this Coleman Chapel family. We pray God for children, grandchildren, our brothers, nieces, and nephews. God, we pray for words of comfort. Comfort them now, God. For we're going to miss missionary Coleman. But God, there's no more pain, no more suffering. No more doctor's appointments. God, thank you. For we know, God, she's resting in your bosom. For to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. God, we are thankful now. Thank you for a life of holiness. How she walked before us as a true example of a saint. God, we are grateful today. And God, we ask that you will touch Elder Jackson. He's going to stand and bring the word today. Anoint him, God, from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. Word his mouth, God. In the name of Jesus. And God, we still say yes. Yes to your will and yes to your way, God. Thank you right now, God. Have your way in this place. Let your glory be manifest. And for that, God, we say thank you. We give you praise. And we give you glory. It is in your matchless name we pray. And all the people of God say thank God. Amen. Thusly, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before, my, before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading here and doer of his word. The New Testament reading coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 through 58. And it reads, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised and corruptible. 
and we shall be changed for this corruptible must put on incorruption this mortal must put on immortality so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality then shall be brought to pass the same that is written death is swallowed up in victory O oh, death where is thy sting O oh, grave where is thy victory the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law but thanks be to God which giveth us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ let me say that again but thanks be to God which giveth us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ therefore my beloved brethren be ye steadfast unmovable always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord the word of the Lord Come on, give God a hand of praise as you take your seat. The next on the program, we have a musical selection from Miss Shanika Williams, following which we will have reflections of missionary Dorothy Coleman. The family has requested three minutes. Please don't get me in trouble. We have reflections from, as a church mother of the Mount Olivet Church of God in Christ, Pastor Ozell Northern and Missionary Jean Wood. Reflection as a first lady of harvest time, Church of God in Christ, Missionary Shirley Daniels. Reflections as a district missionary of the Parsons District, Bishop Joseph Fisher and Missionary Calla Fisher. And reflections as the YPWW Chair Lady of Central Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction, Superintendent John Smith. In that order, will you put your hands together and give God some praise as they come?
Church of God in Christ. In the Youth Congress, we sang together in the choir. We were in the Sunshine Band together. We were in the Purity class together. We were in the YWCC together. And all the way up, up until now. God has been a blessing to us. And even growing up, I'm living in Bolivar, she's living in Jackson, but that was all right. <laughs> because once a month, we came together. And as saints of God, our parents being saints, you know, we had to act like saints, whether we had gotten there or not. But the Lord saved her at the age of 12 yeah. and fill her with the Holy Ghost. Right. At the age of nine, he saved me yeah. and filled me with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. So we were just good together. Yeah. Finished high school, she went to Ohio after she got married and all that. Later, I ended up in Ohio. After I went to New York first, and then we ended up in Ohio. In a backslidden condition, was I? <laughs> but I went to a church one morning, Sunday morning. I saw the address on my way to work on Friday of the church. Went there. Went inside. Sat down. I went in there because it had Church of God in Christ on the outside. 
had no idea that I knew the pastor when I went into church. Sit down and while I'm sitting there, and I could just feel the presence of the Lord and the conviction. I'm looking around. I say, that's Dorothy Jackson over there. That's Nancy Northern over there. I say, what they doing in this church? <laughs> Praise God. And then after a while, the pastor came out of his office and walked up on the pulpit. I say, Parkin is the pastor? We had all grew up here <laughs> in Tennessee together. And now the Lord was uniting us again in Ohio, Dayton, Ohio. The Lord reclaimed me that day. Hallelujah. We work together. When Ellen Northern, uh, do I get six minutes since Ellen Northern not here? <laughs> when Ellen Northern uh, made her the church mother, there were some people that said she's not old enough to be no church mother. But it's not about the age. It's about the relationship that you built with the Lord. Someone that you could talk to. Someone who led and guide you in the way that you should go. Mother Coleman was that person. Praise the Lord. And it seemed like evidently I was following her. Because later on, she relocated, she and her family, back to Tennessee. Oh, I missed her. I missed her smiling face. I missed the teaching that she brought forth. I missed so many times before my husband got saved, you know, I'd go to church sometime crying on the inside. But God let Mother Coleman see the tears on the inside. And I, I was intending to bring them with me. I have some notes today written in her handwriting that said to me, hold on sister, God sees you. It's just Satan in him that hates the Christ in you. So let the Christ in you continue to stand up. God is bringing him in. And hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. At noonday prayer, he messed around and came to church. <laughs> Eleanor Norman, he came there to see if I was really going to church. Came up in the church, looking around, and we were on our knees in prayer. And he he looked around and he decided he'd get on his knees and pray. And he said, this is his testimony, he said, wasn't nobody paying me no attention about what I was saying. Everybody was going to God for themselves and praying. And after a while, something happened to me. And in noonday prayer, God delivered his soul and brought him in. I thank God for the encouraging that Mother Dorothy Coleman gave to me and to so many others. Now I know my time is out. I could say a whole lot more, but I love the Lord. up what this precious lady meant to us at harvest time in three minutes but I will do my best 
Thank you for that beautiful song, It Is Well With My Soul. That is a song that she and Elder Coleman harmonized together often at harvest time. And it would bless our soul. Deliver our soul. And make you want to get saved and stay saved. Oh, what a precious woman she was. What a virtuous woman she was. Who can find such a woman? I have yet to find one, even in myself, even being under her. Who can find such a virtuous woman? I'm going to give at least two testimonies that occurred at harvest time. Elder Coleman used to ask me this question all the time. I was Sister Osler at the time, and he would say, why do you drive all the way from Humboldt, Tennessee? Come through Jackson, and there are several sanctified churches in Jackson. Pass Jackson and come all the way to harvest time to this little old church down here with us. And if I recall, somebody said, a church alive is worth the drive. And the church just went up. They had that kind of spirit that would just make the church go up. Because in her testimony, there was life. In her testimony, there was love. In her testimony, there was no sorrow. She gave this testimony about losing her first son, Elder Coleman Jr. Or Coleman Joke Jr. And she said this, there were some ministers at her church that were in Ohio and they were praying on their knees. And she said, I had lost my baby, my child. And she said, I just couldn't take it. This is her testimony. These are the types of testimonies that she gave at harvest time. Was not ashamed to talk about her trials and tribulations, but talked about how he had brought her through. And she said someone was, pre the, the brothers were praying at the church. And through the power of the Holy Ghost that was in her, the Holy Ghost spoke to a brother in the church and said, get up and go to Dorothy Coleman's house. And she said, I had a knife ready to take my life and take my pregnant child that was in me. She said, I had a knife getting ready to take my life. But she said, there was a knock on the window. That said, missionary Coleman, put that knife down. I tell you, it's good when you're praying. It's good when you have the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost speaks to you, tell you to go and do something. But our job is to get up and obey him. And she said, when I dropped the knock, it was like my mind came back to me. And she said, I went to the door and I opened it. And I just fell up in his, lump, in his arm. Many testimonies. What a precious, virtuous woman to be in the midst. And I'm going to give this last testimony. We were at harvest time. And she was going through something in her body. She didn't express it to us. But from her testimony, you know that she had been in conference with Almighty God, the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And also the Holy Ghost was there. She came to church and for some reason we knew something is going to happen because that's the kind of spirit she carried. She carried the Holy Ghost down on the inside that you knew something is going to happen today and you got excited and that's why I drove all the way from Humboldt, Tennessee to harvest time to be in the midst of the happening of the power, the move of the Holy Ghost. That excited me. She got up to testify. She got up to testify. 
not about her condition, Come on. but to give the honor and the glory to God. Yes, and she stood up. Hey, hey, hey. And she had this way of smiling on her face glory. that you knew that it was well in her soul. Yes. Oh. And she got up. And she said, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that I could ask. Oh, me. And then he now unto him. All she could say, now unto him. What a precious woman. I loved her. She loved me. I have no doubt about it. I'm going to miss her, but you know what the Holy Ghost told me when I said, who am I going to call, Lord? Who am I going to call? Because I could call her anytime. I could talk to her anytime. I said, Lord, who am I going to call now? I'm going to miss her. And this is what the Holy Ghost said. I thank God that she taught us to live by the Holy Ghost. The power that worketh in us. He said, yes, you're going to miss that out of flesh. But she left something in you all that you shall never forget. And that the power of the Holy Ghost shall never leave you nor forsake. Rest well, mother. We love you. Thank you. Coleman. That's what I call it. I don't care whether we were just friend, friend, sitting together, just talking, she and I. But she always called me Sister Fisher, and I'm Missionary Coleman. Missionary Coleman to me was a friend. She was a, I'm going to say a mother. She was a, just somebody just real close that you could talk to when you need to talk to. And you know, even during those times, she she was our first first district missionary of the Parson District. And she taught me a lot of things. She was like my mentor. You know, everybody have a mentor. And she was my mentor because I, I was first time being a superintendent's wife, first time being a pastor's wife, and so there are some things you had to learn. And then she was the first time being a district missionary. So we learned some things along the way together. We would always go to the women's convention together. That's 19 years. We didn't miss a time. We went to the district, to the women's convention all those times together. So you know we learned a lot about each other. We learned a lot about each other. We would cry together. Laugh together, Come on. ate together, Come on. and I tell you, Lord, I tell you, she was somebody that you could just look up to. She was somebody that even when she left, when she left from the first time I think she went to Ohio, and then I would call her, she would call me. 
Then they left and went to Texas. I was calling her, she would call me. I called her a few weeks before she passed. Then I talked to her a, a week or so after, you know, right then before the time was coming. But you know, I love Missionary Coleman. I, I say, I love me some Missionary Coleman. They used to call me crybaby because I, every time, she said, every time you hear a sad story, you cry. But I just, I don't know, and I found out when I was reading her, she, her favorite song was the same one I like. If I could help somebody. You know, if I could help somebody as I pass along, my living will not be in vain. And I can tell her right now, her living is not in vain because she got some people back here that's waiting to be with her. God bless you. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Amen. We're certainly here to celebrate a great woman of God on today. Amen. Missionary Daniel stole a lot of my thunder, but I'm going to take it into another direction. But that's okay. She was an Ephesians 3 and 20 woman. Amen. 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 The missionary has already quoted that. Also, Amen. She was a Proverbs 31 woman. Amen. Read Proverbs 31. And every time you read a scripture that, that depicts the character of missionary Dorothy Coleman. Amen. She was my district missionary for 19 years. Amen. And we worked together side by side. Never had one problem. Amen. At all. She, she, she also supported leadership and respected leadership because that's what she was taught. She was a great woman of God. Amen. I loved her very, very, very much. Amen. And we'll miss her. Yes, here on this earth. Amen. But God knew it was time to take her home. Amen. When I think about, amen, the trials and the tribulations she went through. Amen. It was just like Job. Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Amen. All of my appointed time, I'm going to wait till my change come. For the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. This was a great woman of God. Amen. And we loved her. She was beautiful on the inside and the outside. She was a mother. She taught her children the way that they should live up in, in the, under the admonition of God. Amen. She was a very, very wonderful church first lady. Amen. Under the direction, amen, under the leadership of her, her husband. Amen. Elder Coleman. And we thank God for her. Amen. We love her and we're going to miss her dearly. Amen. And I tell you one thing. We're not going to say goodbye. I want you to repeat this after me. Say, we're not going to say goodbye. We're just going to say good night. Because we'll see you in the morning. gentleman is that's helping the service push through. I would like to get you a one-way ticket to Rosemark. Please see me after service. I am enjoying you today. Apostle Cheney, Lady Cheney, protocol, the established protocol, I respect you and honor you in all of your prospective places. Certainly, Lady Melanie Porter who came in, God bless you. My brother is standing here today. I, I'm going to do the talking, but I wanted him to come because out of honor and respect, he served with Mother Coleman in the YPWW uh, Department of Tennessee Central as the president, and he was um, she was the pre he was the president and she was the chair lady. And uh, Stephen and Ronald and Kim, Melissa, Chris. Valerie, uh, I, we love all of you. Pastor Anthony, love you, man, and all of the kids. Uh, one of the foundational families in Tennessee Central was the Coleman family where uh, Mother Coleman served with distinction. 
and she served with humility. She served with class. And uh, you can't talk about her without talking about her husband, Pastor W.D. Coleman, who would, uh, he could say Dorothy like nobody else could. And uh, he would pick us up in that brown van. And often, uh, Mother Coleman would be in the front seat. And when we didn't see her, he would drop us off. And he would say, I got to go back and pick up Dorothy. And he had a little saying, you know, he said, hey, 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 come on, John. Hey, hey. He, had a, he had a way he talked. And, uh, but they loved the young people. And uh, her towering voice would just fill the room when she would open her mouth and sing. She would open her wild mouth so wide and you could see all of her beautiful white teeth. And, uh, but she loved young people. She worked the altar. Uh, she fed us. She held us accountable. And she loved us. It was all wrapped up in one. And uh, I must say that my, when my brother and I were talking, he was just sharing about the wisdom and respect that she gave him as a young man, but the wisdom that she poured into him as a seasoned woman of God. Uh, oftentimes, Chris and I would, and Eric would get in trouble. It was me, Chris, Eric, Shay Norman, Buster, uh, Cedric Cooper, and, and we would just be running and she would get us and she would she would she could haul out her children's name like I've never heard before. And uh, and she was a stern woman, but she was a loving woman. And she would tell us oh, y'all y'all gotta get to know Jesus. Y'all gotta get saved one day. And we would go on back and do our thing. We would cut up in the in the dorms. That was back when we lived across the street for the U Jacks. And Elder W. D. Coleman would bus us back to Unity Temple on the vans, and we had so much fun. And one of the last songs that I heard her sing several years ago, um, life was like a mountain railroad. And the chorus line, I remember her saying, Blessed Satan, thou will guide us till we reach that blissful shore where the angels wait to join us in thy praise forevermore. On behalf of my brother and myself and all of us that are here from Central and all around, Kim, Ronald, St Stephen, Chris, Melissa, uh, 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 family, Pastor, we love all of y'all. Yeah. Our love and support are with you. Yeah. Pastor Jackson, we love you so much and we appreciate you. God bless you. Thank you. Yeah. Come on, good God. Another hand of praise. Oh, y'all can do better than that. They said one testimony I had never heard out of all the years that I've known Missionary Cole. The one about with the knife, I have never heard that. Uh, the one that brought me and my wife out when we uh, moved to Nashville was the testimony they gave about set the table. If you ain't never had God to set the table, you don't know what I'm talking about. But we remembered and we reflected on what she gave that testimony. We had just moved to Nashville. And can I tell you, God sent a raven. And everything we asked for, the raven had. And all we could remember hearing her say, when Elder Coleman said, set the table. And we set the table. And God did the rest. Amen. Come on, give her a hand. Amen. At this time, uh, the three minutes have expired. For the next couple of people I'm going to call forth, 
because y'all not going to get me in trouble. But at this time, reflection as a sister, Emeritus Thomas Jackson. Reflection as a mother, Elder Christopher Coleman. Following which we'll have a musical selection, Goodness of God. Would you put your hands together in that order? Bless you all to all of the saints of God. It's good for us to be here. I wondered where I should start. I believe the Bible says first natural and then spiritual. So I guess I'll start with the natural. We only had one sister. And in the house there were eight boys and one girl. And she had her way. I suppose she was the pet of the house, just being the one girl. And we had to watch ourselves because when mom and dad left home, they kind of leave her in charge. And she thought she was our mother. She had a habit of watching everything that we did. And guess what she would do? When mom and dad come home, she would tell on us. But you know what? When she tell on us, and then when we get a whooping, she would do the crime. She cried more than anybody else. And I guess that was good because they had so much love for her that when she started crying, they would lighten up on us. So we appreciated that. But that was my sister. But you know what? We called ourselves one time when our parents away from home, we're going to get even with her. So we got a rope and tied her to the tree. And guess what? That was a mistake too, because she told that. But she was a, a good girl. Never had to do a whole lot. They'd always leave her. And, you know, we lived in the country. And we had to pick cotton and peas and corn and everything else. But she'd always be at the house. All she had to do was cook a little bit. And that was good too, because she learned how to be a good cook. A good cook. Needed to be a good cook. When she ended up with five, nine herself. Had to cook. But I thank God for Sister Coleman. I thank God because she's a wonderful sister. Now to the spiritual. I had intended to maybe sing a song. Jesus I'll never forget. But I was going to change it to Sis I'll Never Forget. Because my mother called her Sis Cat. So all the rest of us called her Sis. So I thought that song was befitting. Because it says, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget when way down in Egypt land, you brought me out with a mighty eye straight hand. But I was going to change and say, sis, I'll never forget what you done for me. Sis, I'll never forget how you set me free. Sis, I'll never forget when I was living in Cleveland. How you brought me out with your outstretched hands. The reason I was going to sing it that way was because I was living in Cleveland, going on about my business, you know, having fun, 
wasn't thinking about no church, no saved, no sanctified. I was doing my thing. But it just so happened the Church of God in Christ had a conference in Cleveland. And my sister had determined within herself she was coming to my house and she was going to get me saved. So they had that conference and when the conference was over, my wife was cooking and, and preparing everything, you know. And, uh, you know, I had, I kind of hate to tell it what I had been doing. But uh, I wasn't where I needed to be doing what I needed to be doing. She was making preparations. So when the conference was over, they came over to the house. And, uh, you know, we sit and talk and the pastor and two or three other, I don't know, Sister Woods might have been with them. But they came over to the house and they were, they, and, and we sat and we ate and, 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 and they got through with everything and the pastor said, well, I guess we'll get ready and go back to Dayton. And uh, Sister Coleman said she was sitting there and she thought, hey, this, this can't be all. Something else got to happen here. And when the pastor got through praying for the house, and Sister Coleman was standing there looking around, and she, she looked over at me. I'm standing over by the wall. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm getting happy now. This thing is over. They threw. They about ready to go back home. And I thought I had escaped. Uh, I, I was going to continue to live my life the way I was living. But she looked over at me, standing over by the wall, and she turned and she started to come around the table. And before she got to me, she stretched her hands out like this. And I don't know what happened to her. The Holy Ghost must have been in that room. The Holy she got to me, my hands were up. And I'm screaming, save me, Lord. Praise the Lord. And I thank God for this sister. We only had one sister, but uh, you know what? I would rather, I would not rather have any other sister but this sister. She was a trooper. She fought a good fight. She kept the faith. And I don't know about you, I believe right now she's got a crown on her. I don't know if that's all right. I don't know if you're going to have one. I thank God for having a sister that got saved at an early age. I stayed saved. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. And we're able to impact the lives of so many other folks. I thank God for her. I love her. I appreciate her. Praise the Lord. I went to, I talked to her as often as I could. Went to see her when I could. Yes. Praise the Lord. We, we had planned, you know what, back here about a month ago, we come down to Texas to see her. I had prayed, God, keep her until I get a chance to see her because for four or five months, I kept telling her I was coming. And things kept happening. I don't know why y'all have all them storms down there. But every time I planned on going, a storm would come through Texas. I said, I'm not going now. I have to wait and go later. But I thank God that he kept her until I got a chance to get there and see her. Praise the Lord. I think she was about ready to go home. You know what? I am so glad. Young folk, 
take stock in the fact that if God said it, it's a done deal. If God said it, it's done. I am so glad, praise the Lord, that I got a chance to see her before she passed. We went down and talked with her and laughed and enjoyed one another. Praise God. And I felt like then she had got a chance to see just about all of us because we went down to see her. I felt like then that she's about ready to go to the house. And I thank God. I don't know about you all. Somebody called and said, Pastor Jackson, we're praying for you. I know this is a sad time. Not for me. This is a happy time for me. I am so glad. God knows when and how. You know what? She, 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 she's not, she's not in a position now to where she going to have to take dialysis three times a week. She ain't got to go make no appointment with the doctor to get some pills to help her to get through. The Bible said when this earth in the house. Oh, I just want to say, I just want to say to, to Mercer brother and the, uh, uh, the, the mortuary and what have you. You're not going to put my sister in the grave. You're putting, you're putting a, 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 a friend in the house in the grave. My sister is already with the Lord. that house for her. And I believe she's enjoying herself right now. Praise the Lord. Thank God bless you. I don't want to mess up the mess. I don't want to mess the brother up. Thank you. I've been in this family for over 40 years. In 1978, I came to Tennessee from Detroit to attend Lane College. In 1979, my uncle preached. He preached me out and I got saved and I was at Rock Temple and I would call myself going through a shut-in. I didn't know what a shut-in was. I was on the very back row. And a young lady walked in with some other folks. And they, they, they was always together. There was always four of them. Two of them was Apostle Cheney and Sister Pastor Angela Cheney. They used to always rip them around and Billy used to be with them. And I watched them. And I watched them. But when this young lady that was with them, Kimberly Coleman, she walked in the door. And the Lord told me, I hadn't been saved a month. The Lord told me that's my wife. Oh, <laughs> I went to Elder Coleman. And I asked Elder Coleman if I could date his daughter. And he looked at me and said, what you mean? What you mean date my daughter? I said, I want to see her. He said, you can see her. What do you mean you see her? I said, he's making this thing hard for the city. <laughs> but I watched him, and I watched how he treated and the relationship he had with Apostle Cheney. And at the time, she was attending Red Allen. And I watched him, and I watched, and I watched. But I was determined to live for God. And I was determined to get it right. Time came, my wife was sitting in the car and she was having a conversation with her brothers and sisters. 
about her mother coming to live with her. And I knew then, I knew I couldn't say no. But I started thinking about everybody I knew that had someone to move in with them and the mom. And everybody I called, nobody could give me any advice. Because I didn't want to get it wrong. And I said, I said, what am I going to do? I said, Lord, you got to help me. Because I said she asked me, but her mind was made up when she said mom was coming to live with her. And so my oldest son, Anthony, and Kim was in the family room downstairs. And I overheard them making plans because they used to watch these TV shows about redoing the house and everything. And they was in there talking about, Mom, if you tear this wall out, and you tear this wall out and put the bathroom here and do this. And I said, Lord, you have got to help me. I said, they're about to tear up my house for her mother. And the Lord spoke to me and, and told me and said, just tell her, add it stair and a lift to get her up to her room and let her have that room. And I said, honey, I said, why don't we just get a chair lift? It'll save us about fifty, sixty thousand dollars And she looked and she said, that's a good idea. I said, thank you, Jesus. I only had two disagreements and two times with mother. Like Sister Fisher said, she always gave respect. And we always respected one another. I always called her mother a missionary. Even though she was living in my house and when she came, I said, Mother, we don't want anything from you. Nothing. And, and the first time we had a, a, a disagreement, it was in November 1981. And I was at our apartment on 33 Cobb. And I was, it was Thanksgiving Day. And she called and said, y'all coming over to eat Thanksgiving? And I told her, I said, no, we, we, we're not coming over there to eat, not now. I said, I don't move till after the game go off. And she said, what? I said, yeah, and I said, you can go. I'll meet you over there. Mother thought I was, I, I said, but that's all I had left. I had given up everything else. I said, don't take that from me. She allowed me to have, I think. Here's the second. Mother used to say, I am so sad. I, I, I'm sorry that I have to put you and Kim through this. She said, it just tears me up for you all have to take me and do all the things y'all are doing for me. I looked at her and I said, I said, it's your fault. I said, it's all your fault and Elder Coleman's fault. I said, because you raised my wife to be like that. It's your fault. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible said, children, obey your parents that your days will be long. She cared for her. She cleaned her. She didn't ever have to want for anything. One day mother came down the steps after coming from dialysis. She fixed her plate. And she said, Elder, Elder chap. I said, yes, ma'am. She said, can I take my plate upstairs to eat? In my room, I said, Mother, that's the one rule I have in my house. You do not eat in your room. But I say, You go right ahead, Mother. You go upstairs. <laughs> we had the best time. Mother was saved till the day she died. Now, this is what blew me away. You were singing the song. Now my wife is the song. She's the song. I would go and visit mother. And I walk in the room. And I walk in the room singing. And she look at me. She and I go to singing. 
I miss a note or get a burden. She go keep right on singing. She just keep right on going. The week before she died, I go in the room and I'm singing again. Jesus getting us ready. Jesus getting ready. She go to singing with me. That Friday, I get up and I say, I'm going to see mother. Kim and left him with the word. Walk in the room. That Friday morning. I said, Mother? She opened her eyes and looked at me. I said, Can we pray? She said, Yeah, let's pray. How are you? Thank you, thank you. We prayed. We would pray. And Mother started feeling something. We prayed. Mother, forget about the pain. We pray. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Two hours later, they called and said she was gone. Thank you. 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 God. Now I was about to give him a compliment and thank him for the therapy because there was too much power in the room for me to get up here and talk about mother. But there he go. <laughs> oh my God. I want to thank my brother and my sister for the therapy they gave my mother as she exited. I want to thank you. Amen. All right, I'm going to try to get through this. I have one job. I ain't got but three minutes. All right, a tribute to mother. There's not enough hours in a day, nor days in a year, to share all mom's characteristics that shine so crystal clear. Remember, I only have three minutes before I'm to disappear. So please listen up close as I tell you about our dear. Mother, M stands for modest. O for obedient. T for trustworthy. H is for honest, E is for extraordinary, and R is for resourceful. Because of these and many more characteristics today, our mother is revered. Mother chose family over fame twice when asked to pursue a promising music career. She enjoyed being the homemaker over making money away from the home. Simply said, after God and daddy, mother put us first. If, if we was to name our mother a flower, she would be a lily. Liken unto the Lord, her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the lily of the valley. By the grace and goodness of God, literally everything mother touched and stretched forth her hands to do was crowned with excellence. Right. Literally. The word of God says children are a gift from God. Come on. Come on. However, we believe mom to be the gift after having received her steadfast love throughout the years. As a true Proverbs 31 woman, our mother, missionary Dorothy L. Coleman, has her just reward. And our children, 
and her children's children shall rise up and call her blessed. Let her legacy arise and her own works praise her in the gates.
God of praise for his goodness. Oh, y'all can do better than that. Amen. I know it had been mentioned before, but we are so glad and elated to have the first lady of Tennessee Central in the house. First lady, Delphine Porter. Will y'all show us some love, please? Make this one statement. Did anybody besides me saw the smile? Amen. Was I the only one? Ain't it awesome when you can leave here and you got a smile on your face? That was enough just to shout all by itself. Because everybody ain't smiling that leaves. But I saw a smile on her face. That's an awesome testimony. Amen. Did we enjoy this ensemble on here today? Amen. At this time, we have words of acknowledgement coming from Pastor Cleophis Cherry, the pastor of the Harvest Time Church of God in Christ. Administrative Assistant Ace Gilliam from God Given Church of God in Christ in Canton, Ohio. Following which, Pastor Samuel Jackson, Philadelphia Church of God in Christ in San Francisco, California. And after that, we will have acknowledgement and resolution from Dr. Devon Jackson. Amen? Yes. Let's say amen in that order. Show some love. Missionary Pretty, and this is my twin, Lauren. Uh, I can say a lot about Mother Coven. Uh, when I first come to church, she was standing beside me. I, all the young folk, there she was standing beside me. And we were on the altar, and she was like, Open your mouth, praise them, open your mouth, open your mouth. And I'm standing there looking at her like, Please leave me alone. But she did give her, open your mouth, praise the praise the time. She got on my nerve. I said, Lord, if I just open my mouth one time, praise she'll leave me alone. And when I did that, that's when the Holy Ghost. Oh my God. I never will forget it. It started in my toes and then it started coming up and I didn't even know anything about the Holy Ghost. And I'm looking down like, what's going on? Why is my toes moving? And it really got me when my tongue was moving and I wasn't moving my mouth. And I'm like, what is this? But you know, I thank God for her. You know, the, her favorite song that I like was Fill My Cup, Lord. And uh, if you don't have real love, then it doesn't mean a thing. 
And the last time I talked to Mother Coleman was two years ago when my sister died of COVID and she was still encouraging. And I thank God, Pastor Cherry always told us as long as he living and Mother Coleman living, he was gonna take care of her. And he always did on Mother's Day and on uh, birthday, he always sent her something. And Mother Coleman and Pastor Coleman was our leaders for 32 years. And Mother Coleman was a lady. She knew her place. She wouldn't try to run the church, trying to tell everybody what to do. She was almost, she was peaceful. She was loving. They was funny. I was laughing some stuff the other night I was thinking about. You know, and I thank God for her. She is a real lady. And I honor her. And I respect her. And if I had a problem, she was approachable. Some people are not approachable, but she was approachable. Have anything to say, Kenya? What's going to say, baby? <laughs> yeah, Mother Coleman only called me her baby. And um, I love Mother Coleman and Ella Coleman. You can't separate them two. And um, they are really, I can, what I can say about Mother Coleman, she was a good woman. Because from the time um, I take my vacation, I've been doing it for years, I go stay a whole week with them. So I can say Mother Coleman is a good woman. She loved her husband. She took care of him. Uh, no, she wasn't a Fussing woman, nothing. I mean, she was a good woman. I just want to say to the family, y'all had good parents. Yes. And y'all should be, y'all were blessed to have good parents, to grow up in a good home. And I was going to say I love y'all. Everybody say praise the Lord. Praise Bring you greetings from the God-given Church of God in Christ in Canton, Ohio, where I serve as the under shepherd for these last 40 years. I am uh, also like to say I am the pastor of, y'all call her Valerie, we call her Valeria, uh, Everett and Charity and uh, Krishana. But I also like to say, I first met Sister Coleman and Sister Gillum. If I go my three minutes, you can give me the cutoffs. Okay. Uh, I told my, I remember Sister Coleman about four, 52 years ago. She was a member of God Given when my father was pastoring. And uh, I was just a teenage boy back then. And uh, what I remember the most about it, and everything you say, I concur. But what I remember the most about her, first of all, not only does she have this voice that could just bellow out, but what I remember that she was anointed of God. If the service was not where it should have been, amen, she would sing and, and listen, and the power of God will come in and touch each and every one of us. And I like to say, just as in words of encouragement to this family, I thought about different analogies I could share, but I thought I'd share a true story. When I grew, grew up as a boy, my mother had a big rose bush. I mean, uh, enormously. And, every, and people would walk by, and they would see the rose bush, and they would admire it. But on one occasion, Mom decided to cut some of the roses and place them in a vase. And we lived in an upright house. The garage was underneath the house and the, the living space was on the second floor. Uh -huh. And she would put it in the window. Okay. And when she placed the flowers in the window, and I asked mom, I said, mom, you cut the flowers and you placed them in the window in the second floor. Nobody can see those flowers. And she said, listen, while they were on the rose bush, everybody else got to enjoy them. Uh -huh. But I cut them so I could bring them upstairs so I can enjoy them. Uh -huh. What I see, to, what I'm saying to you, listen, God allowed us to enjoy Mother Coleman 
but God called her home that he might enjoy her. And I know many times we say that, listen, we'll see you later, but I, I, I'm here to tell you, listen, I, I, yes, I want to see mom and dad, but I'm here to tell you when I see Jesus. I, I've been through some tough times, and yes, I'm going to look for others, but when I see Jesus, come on, it's a man. Because all of my sorrow, all of my pain, all of my heartaches will be God bless you all. Thank God for you and for this wonderful opportunity to come together. Just to bless the Lord. If somebody already said, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord to let us exalt his name together. Somebody said, bless the Lord, oh my soul. All that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Yeah, how many know he's still a healer? He's still a deliverer. And he's still able to set free. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And forget not all of his benefits. Redeemed our lives of destruction. Crowns us with loving kindness and gentle mercy, satisfying our mouths with good things, so that our youth may be renewed like the eagles. We thank God again for this wonderful day. And again, I, I just love the psalmist. He has such a wonderful way of expressing his love for the Lord. Truly my soul waited upon God. From him cometh my salvation. He only is my salvation. And he is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. Truly my soul waiteth upon God, for my expectation is from Him. And we bless God for all that He is to us. Wonderful day, and so many wonderful expressions have already been made concerning our system. Now, Pastor used to tell me, he said, now you have an assignment, so when they call you, do your assignment and sit down. <laughs> but I, I got a little something to go on. You know, when we were children growing up, uh, my sister, she had an established a man a contest for us. When our mother and father was gone, you know, she would they would organize a little a singing session, and we would all have to sing, you know, and I was the, probably the smallest one in the group. Growing up, I was a small child, and, and, and my brothers, you know, they, especially one sitting back there, younger than I was, but he was two times my size. That was Leroy. So I was kind of small growing up, you know, and I, I had a lot of um, criticism, perhaps you might say, come my way, because I was the, probably the darkest one. Growing up, you know, things change as you grow up. You know, growing up, you know, my complexion changed, you know, and I probably got a lighter complexion than some of the rest of them now. But praise the Lord, it was just, it was just good, it was just good to be in a family where there were eight boys and one girl, you know, and we kind of separated ourselves, at least I, I oftentimes, you know, uh, saw the difference between, you know, in threes, you know, my oldest brother, James, and, and Leroy back there, and my brother Robert, uh, they resembled each other a lot. They had that resemblance. And then there was uh, uh, Brother John there, Brother Tom, and Brother Ray. They, they looked a lot alike. And then uh, I, I was, had probably the proudest one in the family because they had me in the family where I represented, I, I kind of looked like my sister. They said, you, you, your sister, and Dennis, you three look alike. So I, I took pride in the fact that I had been designated as the one that resembled my sister. Because, and, 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 and growing up, you, 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 you learn to love you. I love all of my family members. I mean, I, I, I think you just grew up loving each other. 
because we, everywhere we went, everybody thought, you know, when you see one Jackson, you see four of them. So, so we kind of hung together. We were our best friends. We didn't have a whole lot of friends, you know, in the neighborhood. So we grew up being one another's best friends kind of thing. But my sister was a delight in the family. And, and, and I remember the times, you know, when my mother and father would be away, you know, and then they organized a little contest for us. And my sister spearheading it, you know, where, you know, they would name us after some cars, you know, UB Ford, UB Chevrolet, UB this, that, or the other. And then they would be in one room and they'd make a big bowl of cornflakes and milk, you know, and then we would have to be in the other room. And so when they call your name out, Ford, <laughs> you have to run and get you a mouthful of cornflakes and milk. See, that, you know, and that, that, was, that was something to expect. <laughs> I mean, that, that was something you couldn't get enough of playing that game. You know? <laughs> because we, we didn't have the opportunity to go and snack like people do today, you know. You, you, when you ate breakfast, you didn't get anything else until lunchtime. You didn't go, you didn't go in the kitchen to learn that. <laughs> but anyway, it, it's just the way we grew up. But my sister, she was the delight in the family. It was already said, you know, that... Uh, uh, Pastor Tom, the Emeritus Tom, he talked about how uh, when my father would discipline us and our sister had already told on us, so when, they, when he started to discipline us, uh, she would start to do all the crying. Now that might have had an effect on my mother, but it didn't seem to affect my father at all. <laughs> because he didn't stop until he was finished. <laughs> but but it, 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 turned, it turned out nice. I wouldn't, I wouldn't change my family and, and all the things that took place growing up for anything else in the world. So, and like I said, my pastor always told me, you know, do your assignment and then sit down. But then I got this little thing ringing down on the inside. All that you need is in Jesus. He satisfies Joy he supplies. My life would be worthless without him. All things in Jesus I find. And I want to say one more time. All that I need is in Jesus. He satisfied Joy He supplied All that would be worth it Without Him All things in Jesus I
We honor the sweet king on today and all to whom honor is due. Honor to this precious family on today of which I have the privilege to be a part. And we are before you to uh, offer acknowledgments and uh, resolutions. Uh, there are several that have been received, but by reason of time, we will not be able to read them all. But we want you to know that the family will receive each resolution so that they may view it at a later time. And your gestures of love and kindness are very much appreciated. Praise the Lord. Uh, some of the resolutions that have come in, just to acknowledge them here, the host church of New Life Christian Center. Uh, where the pastor is Dr. Barry T. Cheney. Also from God-given Church of God in Christ, we have two resolutions. Uh, one is from the general congregation and a second one from the praise team. <laughs> well, praise his name. Uh, we also have uh, a resolution from the McLaughlin Temple Church of God in Christ in the city of Richmond, California, one of the churches that is a part of the district where our eulogist is the district superintendent. Uh, this church, McLaughlin Temple, is pastored by Elder Willie C. Haynes. There's also a resolution from the California Northwest Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction of the Churches of God in Christ, where the bishop is Bishop Nathaniel Bullock and the supervisor, Mother Rashonda McDonald. This is the jurisdiction from which our eulogist serves as an administrative assistant. We also have a resolution here from Temple Worship Center, Church of God in Christ in Parsons, Tennessee. And there the pastor is Bishop Joseph E. Fisher. And uh, Sister Veronica McDonald is the recording secretary. We also have a resolution from the Parsons District Church of God in Christ, and it's offered in loving memory, and uh, the superintendent there, this is offered by the secretary missionary Angela Taylor, and it's offered on behalf of Bishop Dr. Joseph Fisher. Copies of these will be provided to the family. We would like to read in your hearing uh, just three of these resolutions, if we may, uh, reading through quickly the wonderful words that have been shared. Uh, so needful that we read uh, two resolutions which reflect the churches of which uh, our beloved mother was a member. Uh, this first resolution is coming from the New Jerusalem Ministries, amen? And the resolution says, resolution of respect. I'm doing fairly well, but just in case, let me get my helpers. <laughs> Lord, I want to thank you. <laughs> resolution of respect for Mother Dorothy Lejeune Coleman, a beloved woman of integrity and grace. Psalm 116 and 15 in the NIV says, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful servants. Whereas God in his infinite holy wisdom has called home Mother Dorothy Lejeune Coleman on July the 28th, 2023 to dwell forever in the glory of his presence, the officers and members of New Jerusalem Ministries offers our sincere condolences to the entire family. Your sorrow is our sorrow. Your loss is our loss. 1 Thessalonians 4.13 says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, glory to God, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, hallelujah, even as others which have no hope. It is the benediction of a life lived in such godly service, admiration, and submission to the power of God. Whereas Mother Dorothy uh, Coleman served God's kingdom in devout ministrations to the church, her family, and to all those who had the pleasure of spending time in her presence. We will always truly cherish the conversations filled with wisdom and words of encouragement. Mother Dorothy Coleman has left us with many stories of courageous faith. 
Brother Coleman offered her services to her church for the greater honor and glory of God with a spirit of humility and an honorable, consistent commitment. Whereas Mother Coleman was a loving, attentive wife, mother, and grandmother who instilled in her children a strong devotion to the Lord and a lifestyle of true holiness. Her legacy will continue to live on through her children and her many beloved grandchildren. We have all been blessed by the example of Mother Coleman and we are better, stronger, and more equipped to live in this narrow way. Therefore, be it further resolved that we bow to a greater will than our own. We rest in the knowledge and truth that one day we will be united with our loved ones again in joy and in the fullness of God's mercy. This resolution is humbly submitted in faith and appreciation for the gift of our time with the jewel missionary mother Coleman. For God has spoken and let the church say what? Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Gracefully submitted on this 12th day of August 2023 from Pastor Eric, Lady Shana Jackson, and the New Jerusalem Ministries of Jackson, Tennessee. This resolution is from Harvest Time Church of God in Christ, where the pastor is Elder Cleophas A. Cherry. Resolution says we are today confronted by the words of our Lord in Revelation 21 and 4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. We are in this world for a limited time, and with the breath of the infant begins the race to the grave, a race everyone must run. Whereas in the providence of God, he has brought to the close the life of Mother Dorothy Coleman, the officers and members of the Harvest Time Church of God in Christ in Henderson, Tennessee, feel it is befitting to express their sympathy to the family during the passing of Mother Dorothy Coleman. We commend to you him who knows what is best and will always do right. You have our sincere prayers. Whereas Mother Dorothy Coleman was a reverent woman who loved the Lord, a very independent person who would perform any task that was asked of her. She loved her family with a gentle yet stern combination which only she possessed. Be it resolved that we bow in humble submission to him who never makes a mistake and remind the family to be encouraged remembering these scriptures. John 14, 1 through 3, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there ye may be also. Be it resolved that a copy of this resolution be given to the family, copy kept in the church records this 12th day of August 2023, lovingly submitted Pastor Cleophis Cherry. Finally, one more resolution from our eulogist on the day from the Greater Powerhouse Church of God in Christ in Santa Rosa, California. District Missionary Emerita Dorothy Lejeune Coleman, she fought a good fight. She finished her course. She kept the faith. We, the Greater Powerhouse Church of God in Christ, now may extend our deepest sympathy to the Jackson and Coleman families in the loss of a dear, sainted mother of Zion and friend, District Missionary Emerita Dorothy Lejeune Coleman. Without fear or despair of her failing health, Mother Coleman remained a stalwart saint of the Most High God. Whereas Mother Dorothy Lejeune Coleman was saved at the young age of 12 and with enough revelation and determination to make her call and election sure, she set out on her journey. 
Whereas this young woman was so greatly gifted that she used her voice as an instrument to glorify God as often as she had the opportunity, including singing along with Dorothy Norwood and recording music as a lead vocalist with the Ohio Jurisdictional Choir. Whereas in her pursuit of excellence, she both spiritually and naturally, after marrying the love of her life, William David Coleman, she raised her nine children in the fear and admonition of the Lord, teaching them that only what you do for Christ will last. Whereas her life modeled this both in the home and in the marketplace, she not only worked a secular job, but imparted spiritual guidance and wisdom while serving as church mother under Pastor Ozell Northern. Whereas her love for Christ and the people of God always made room for his leading, Mother Coleman would again be elevated to serve as the first lady of the Harvest Time, Church of God in Christ, district missionary of the Parsons District under Superintendent Joseph Fisher and YPWW Chair Lady of the Central Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction of Tennessee. Whereas Mother Coleman's person's life being mirrored the words of the old song, if I can help somebody, as I travel along the way, then my living will not be in vain. The proof of her life testifies that she lived out this thing to the fullest. Therefore, be it resolved that we are praying for all who remain, that the God of all comfort will comfort your hearts as only he can. Always remember, quote, whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. St. John 11 and 28, let these words comfort your hearts. Be it further resolved that our beloved Mother Coleman was moved to a city which has foundations whose builder and maker is God. The other day there was a reunion, not on land, neither on water, but in the air. And there came a voice from the ultimate organizer saying, well done, well done. Well done. Be it finally resolved that the pastor, first lady, and the entire greater powerhouse family go on record as expressing our deepest sympathy to the family of Mother Dorothy LeJune Coleman. A copy of this resolution given to the family and a copy kept for the records. This 12th day of August, year of our Lord, 2023, from Administrative Assistant John Jackson and the greater powerhouse, Church of God in Christ. God bless you. Are you ready for the word? Oh, that was kind of slow right there. Are you ready for the word? Amen. Amen. I get excited about celebrations. You shouldn't put it on the program if you didn't want us to have one. Hello, somebody. Amen. But at this time, we will have a song of preparation from Sister Melissa Edwards, following which we will be in the hands of our eulogist. I'm asking that when she have completed her song of preparation, that you would stand to your feet with the exception of the family to receive this great man of God, administrative assistant, John Jackson, the proud pastor of the greater powerhouse, Church of God in Christ in Santa Rosa, California. Put your hands together and Sister Melissa Brown.
all of my good days, they are
God, we thank you for your goodness and your kindness, your tender mercies. Thank you for this occasion. Because your word said, in all things, give thanks. This is the will of God concerning you. We desire to be in your will, God. Every hour of the day. We need you to monitor our uprising and our down sitting. Dispatch the angels even on this day to uphold the upright. That you might strengthen those that are weak, encourage those that are discouraged, build those up that feel torn down. Send a word, God. Hey! Send a word, God. Just one word from a king has power today. Just one word. So send a word, God. We be so careful of praise and magnify your name. Give you glory until you come again. This we ask in your son Jesus' name. And all the saints said, thank God. Thank God. Amen and amen. Clap your hands and thank the Lord. Oh, don't play that Clap your hands and bless the Lord. Ah, glory, glory. Yeah. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, we ain't told about it now, but three minutes I have to cut across the field. So we may just praise him and uh, get on up out of here, huh? Anybody feel, feel like praising him? Hold up, we ask God for a word, we have to say something. So you all know he has a prayer. <laughs> God bless you, we're going to move on. Certainly we give honor to our great God and deference to this host pastor and to all of these pastors and elders. Bishop, Bishop, God bless you, sir. All that are in the house, elders and ministers, superintendents and missionaries and district missionaries and uh, certainly to this family of which I am a part and thanking God for all that he has done and is doing uh, this is the most uh, I know folks are auspicious occasion and for myself to be in this position I counted a wonderful honor uh, to been asked to eulogize my own sister and only sister but uh, as Elder Samuel say, I have an assignment, so if you all pray, uh, my assignment can go real fast. But if you all just sit there like you're doing now, I would advise you to go out and get your lunch and come back. Because we could be here for a while. Praise God. But we're, we're in a celebration. And I'm in celebration mode. So I may just, uh, just cut out in a dance in a second. So you all join me, will you please? Don't, don't watch me. Get a 
up and help me. They all up and helping the preacher. Glory to God. Well, you've heard about five eulogies already. I'm going to make mine real quick. Cut across the field. My brother already told you we're from the country, so cutting across the field, most of you may be aware of it. Maybe you're not. So all of y'all look like city folk to me. Look at all dapper and everything. All dignified. Sanctified. Better throw that in there. But we are blessed of the Lord on today and uh, Siskat is made at home. And I'm just going to take for a thought just for a moment uh, from Psalms 116.15 and most of us probably know it by heart. The Bible says uh, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. So I just want to take for a thought, something precious just happened. Yeah. Ah, now, now, I'm a little bit different now. So you all go with me. Uh, I, I like to be uh, in the will of God on time, flow with him. And... If God says something precious just happened, who am I? Oh, y'all are going to help me do nothing. Who am I to act like something else just happened? God said something precious just happened. And then, then we know, we know some of us, you know, we're married and all of that. And we know, remember that wedding day, some precious happened. And everybody was smiling and throwing flowers at us. And all kind of stuff. We jumped in that car and made it off to the honeymoon. Smiling all the way. Something precious just happened. Y'all got to move on. Only got three minutes. Already got. But but I chose when I read that I chose to believe God rather than go with my feelings and my emotions. And when I chose to believe God, and not only believe, but agree. And when I agreed with God, something got in my feet. Oh, something got in my hands. Oh, and something got down in my soul. And before I do it, I was giving him just a little footwork. And giving him a few hand claps. My mouth flew open. And I began to give him some praise. Only thing about it, it wasn't in English. It was in another tongue. That get down below your English language. It takes you above What's really going on? Well, y'all kind of stood up already. See, y'all thought I was, I was just kidding about the three minutes, okay? I really have about ten. Let me, let me, let me, let me say something here. Uh, Ella Tom told you all, a, a, a real, uh, when I first started preaching at my first film, uh, there's an old uh, preacher that sat down beside me, uh, very well-spoken, sagacious type individual. 
And he told me, he said, son, this is your first one? I said, yes, sir. I was nervous. And he said, well, let me give you some good advice. I said, yes, sir. I always, somebody older than you, you listen. I said, yes, sir. He said, listen, there's three things you need to do. You remember this all of your life. He said, if you do these three things, you will have been a good minister of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Right. He said, number one, you comfort the family. Yeah. Number two, he said, you honor the dead. Yeah. Right. Number three, he said, you challenge the sinner. Yeah. He said, now you do those three things, you'll be a good minister of the Lord Jesus Christ. So let's embark upon this journey. And, and we've heard plenty of comfort for the family. I'm feeling pretty comfortable. How about you, family? They looking pretty comfortable. All right, so I don't have to stay there too long, huh? All right, all right. I just got to move on from there. Family, be comfortable. For the Bible did say, absent from the body. Present with the Lord. And all of us that are saved, we know that to be true. That the minute you... Take your last breath. Uh, you are with the Lord. And now Bible doesn't say where in all of that. So we don't put nobody nowhere. The Bible didn't say put us. We know she's with the Lord. Now, where they are located, I don't know the location. Nobody sent me the address. I don't know the zip code. But we know she's with the Lord. That's what the Bible said. And uh, anybody know that in the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of Trying to get you all involved here. Yeah. Fullness of joy. Let me see some joy in the air. Talking real joy. <laughs> joy that kind of get in your feet, you know. So be comforted, family. We know where Sis Cat is. Somebody been calling me and they keep calling me out after a while. I told them, well, 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 hold up. Sorry for your loss. I said, no, I don't have a loss. Lost mean you don't know where it is. But I know exactly where God can eat. Know exactly where she is. See, because she lived two ways. To have gone the other way. But the Bible says your works shall follow you. They shall praise you in the gates. Yes. Glory to God. And she had some works. Yes. You are looking at a product yes. of her works. Yes. See, Ella Tom told his story. Ella Tom told his story. She was always around when God decided to deliver somebody. And heard my mom, who was very, very afraid of flying. But somehow or another, God gave them the courage to fly out to California. I couldn't believe it. They here? <laughs> no folks scared. They don't fly. But I was having you know, they here. I'm thinking, oh, Lord. Because I've been calling home, telling them I go to church every Sunday. I knew they'd never know. <laughs> Boy, God will fix you, I tell you. <laughs> and they, and they, 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 they say, you're going to church somebody to run downtown by that little old zoot suit. <laughs> Had that little thing on, try and fool them, you know. We went to church. And I'm sitting up there with my little zoot suit on it. 49er football tickets in my pocket. <laughs> my dope in the other pocket. I'm getting ready to go to the game and act the fool. I'm 
you ready to challenge the sinners in here? There you go. There you go. Just a minute, but we got in there and God really arranges the stars. You have to watch God. I went in with the notion I'm going to sit on the end so I can get out of here. I'm not going to miss this whole game. I'm going to get out of here in time for, for halftime because I know they're going to preach till tomorrow. <laughs> but I'm not going to be here. Ease out. I forgot all about what I said going in and got stuck between mom and sis. I said, how did I get up in here? Stuck. And while I'm sitting there trying to figure out how did that happen? Preacher kept saying, you need joy. Then he said, real joy. And I spoke back to him and said, help my joy and it's real joy well that went on for about an hour and a half and finally I saw the organ player get up and put his coat on I said thank the Lord Pastor. said everybody stand we're dismissing I got up said, boy I made it spoke too soon I happen to look over at Sis Cat. She had that same look on her face all the time. And I heard her say, Lord, this all? I know what she was talking about. This all for me, I'm getting out of here. And you all need to start moving. Then the last words I heard was, save him, Lord. And saints of God, it's too late for the devil to tell me Jesus is not real. Yeah, it's way too late because a figure that looked like the one Michelangelo painted, I know that's not look like Jesus, but the one we know he looked like because we look at the picture. I saw that figure walk through the bench. I was about four benches back. He didn't go around to the side. He walked through the bench. Boy, I had that whole bench in front of me shaking up. Mess around and got to me. Yeah. Watch this. Yeah, you better watch this. <laughs> but I, 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 I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Yeah. He had his arms out like this. And the saints of God, when we see him, the holes are still in his hands. Yeah. Woohoo. Oh, somebody said, well, did he get healed on the way back? No, it's the holes still in his hands. He didn't tell him, tell him, said, you're going to feel my hand. Still got the holes where the nails went in. Look at my side where the spear went in. I'm going to keep these as remembrance of the price I paid for you and you and you. Shot into his hands with light. And I remember what the scripture said. And that light was the light of men. Next thing I knew, I felt arms around me. Glory to God. And call me by my name, John. I said, who is this? Oh, shall tell it almost. And, and, and let me know today I have secured you. I hadn't heard that word in my life. Secured me. What are you talking about? Oh, but the love of God. And he held me in his arm. I just slid on down to the floor. And three minutes on the floor, cleaning up a lifetime of degradation and sin. Don't tell me, God. From there, walked outside. Jesus felt like I'd been through the car wash. 
I felt clean. Got outside and the sky was blue. Not the blue I've been seeing. The grass was green. Greener than anything I've ever seen. And I heard birds singing. In San Francisco, a bird in San Francisco been dead. They can't even stand the stench of the place. Oh, that was 44 years ago. And 11 left my side. Sister and I, we had kind of a, 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 a relationship that was a little different. And we kept it kind of secret. She said, now, don't you tell nobody. <laughs> so we, we agreed to keep our little secrets, take them to the grave. Many times she called and she said, the Lord said to call you. I'm not telling my children. But I have this or I have that. And the enemy say it's my last time. And we would pray, and she said, I'm giving you three days. I said, wait a minute, what do you mean, three days? What if the Lord don't have something until seven days? She said, I'm giving you three days. Look, look. You pray. Come on. You call me in three days. Uh -huh. <laughs> Put me on the spot like that. I don't have, like, no, no direct line. I, I pray, and he answer whatever you get ready. You got three days. <laughs> and I call her back, and I tell her, what did he say? I see he said, it's going to be all right. She'd call me back a little later and she said, what we talked about is gone. The Lord is taking care of it. And we did that kind of off and on. But the other evening, my daughter Kim called me. And she told Kim to call me. Kim obeyed, finally after she got downstairs in the parking lot, <laughs> called me, said, sister, your sister want to talk to you. Mom want to talk to you. I said, okay, where are you? Parking lot. No, she, you know, sis ain't in the parking lot. <laughs> so I guess she had in her mind, I'm not going to call him, you know, you just kind of maybe hallucinating or something, I don't know. But I told her, go back up there, let me talk to her. She went back up to her room and put on the phone. I thought she would be one of them times when she would make me pray because Kevin told me, she said, you pray, everything going to be all right. I started praying, well, typical Dorothy Lejeune, Jackson, Coleman. Got on the phone. I started praying. She took the prayer. In her usual fashion. Got happy. Yes, Lord. Hey, how you? Praise the Lord. Yay, hey, God. Woo. And I'm thinking, now, okay, let me pray. You said, look. <laughs> she took the prayer, you know. And I said, don't you all say she was real low sick. She couldn't hardly do nothing. See, yeah, she was until you start praying. Then she started praying. Look at that. And when she finally said, I have a feeling, everything going to be all right. I knew then she's on her way home. She had gotten a glimpse of something that we weren't privy to. But she said, it's going to be all right. I stopped by to tell the family. Those that are here today, everything is going to be all right. You see, she embarked upon a journey. Some years ago, most of us can identify with trips. And especially when you're a kid, trips that promises great things, excitement. And you can't wait 
to get there like Disneyland. I don't know if you've been there, but what an attraction. And my kids, we used to take road trips. They would always ask, uh, Dad, are we there yet? Tell them, no, not yet. We're, we're still rolling in the car. Come on, man. Come on. Uh, sis embarked upon a trip yeah. that told her there's a place beyond the sky. Yeah. And, 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 and the streets are paved with gold. Talked about how beautiful the place is. And all of us that have accepted Christ, we have embarked upon this adventure. Wasn't it an adventure that was not without obstacles, not without problems. I heard somebody say that ah, she endured the death of her baby boy, but kept on going. Endured the death of a middle son, but kept on going. Endured the death of a baby girl, but kept on going. And finally, she endured the death of her husband, but kept on going. Cause she heard about a, a city Ah, that's so beautiful and wonderful that eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, haven't entered to the mind of the heart of those that God will love him. He's got great things for the care of a family as a mother, the care of the church that her husband passed it, the burdens of the members, but her anointed singing turned many souls back to God. She endured hardness as a good soldier, but kept right on going. And the other evening, I heard a voice that I'm getting out of here, John. I'm going to a place where there's no earth wheels rolling. Going to a place where trouble. I'm going to a place where there are no more dying. I'm going to a place where there's no more crying. Oh, John, I'm getting out of here.
in this house that will say yes to the Lord today? Is there one? Just one. Is there one that will say yes to the Lord today? Everybody in this house is saying, isn't that wonderful? Because I know if you wouldn't say it, you would raise that hand, you slip that hand up and say, God, today I receive you as my Savior and my Lord. Don't dare miss this opportunity and the great privilege of serving the King. Yeah, your name might be on the road. That don't mean it's written down in heaven. Maybe on the church road. But the book you want to make is the one that's in heaven. You want your name written in that book. Because that's the only book that's going to count. God is not coming checking church roads. Make your call and election sure. Do that while the blood is running warm in your veins. And do some work. Because their works will follow them. And praise them in the gates. This is not just about making a confession. It's about works. For we were created unto good works. And this daughter had good works to follow her. And we're here today to celebrate her. Father in heaven, you know each one that's in the building. You know the ones who are religious. You know the ones who are churchgoers. But never got into the Lamb's book of life. My prayer today at this tender time of hearts being tender toward you and trying to figure it out that you would sow seeds today that may not come up until tomorrow, next week, next month, next year. But sow seeds today, Master, that your children will come in and find shelter from the storms of life with great promise that when we see him it will be a man thank you for this celebration this time thank you for this past opening his doors thank you for all of those who have attended your continued blessings upon the family for comfort and those in the family that have not made their election and call sure. Don't let this time pass without cultivating in their heart a desire and a love for God. This woman instilled that in every last one of her children. But it's going to be up to them to make it sure. Now that she's gone on the glory, I know we all want to see you again. So therefore, we will continue to fight the good fight of faith and lay hold of eternal life. So we ask in your son Jesus' name and all the saints said, thank God and amen. God bless you. Thank you. Give the Lord a hand of praise. directors are coming they are coming at this time funeral directors are coming Thank you. understand that the repass family will be at the VA, VFW building 3803.
US 45, you're in Jackson. Missionary of Mellon Porter, First Lady of the Tennessee Central Jurisdiction. Thank 